What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Appreciate, as always, every single one of you stopping by. And in today's video, we're going to talk about what is happening right now in the world, what's happening in crypto. Just give you a quick update. I have some information, some articles pulled together, of course, that I feel like do a good job of curating what exactly is happening right now. I have some Ripple news. Um, some updates on a few other utility projects that we follow, but not really anything crazy happening. Markets are kind of holding stable here, you know, really just watching the overall, um, the, you know, where things are. You know, Monday is the start of the new week. Different indices are going to be changing and opening. Really just paying attention to things on a day-to-day -day basis and also macroeconomically. So, Big news, obviously, is uh, the Ukraine crisis and really what the U.S. is doing in response to that. So I have some thoughts on that. Now, we follow, we talk about SWIFT, and we talk about the different uh, you know payment networks that are going to be changing. So you see here, obviously, we've now blocked access to SWIFT from Russia, of Russia. So... This so there was a few folks that are few folks, a few countries that were holding out and really just preventing the final vote. I think it was Italy and and Germany, but they've all decided to now block them, cut Russia out. That's going to have massive ramifications for the Russian war effort. You know, it's costing billions of dollars a day to even continue this invasion, and so the, it's going to be really costly for them. So. Uh, essentially, them getting cut out is going to be a huge restriction on the Russian central bank's international reserves. Really, they're trying to cause the Russian currency to inflate, and it's going to put a lot of pressure on Russian leaders. We commit to ensuring that a number, a certain number of Russian banks are removed from SWIFT. Now, it's going to ensure that the banks are disconnected from international financial system and harm their ability to operate globally. Now, what I care about is how does that impact you and I watching this video? How does that impact our investments? That's what I really want to know. Obviously, it's terrible what's happening over there, but we really, I, I want to pay attention to things macroeconomically um, and through that lens. So that's really to me, what I'm trying to pay attention to here and what that impact will be. Now, there's certain speculation here. This is from BitcoinNews.com. Cutting Russia from SWIFT could lead to Bitcoin explosion. I think this is an interesting uh, realm of possibility. The U.S. and NATO's decision to remove Russia from SWIFT will lead to devastating blowback. This move could lead to the destruction of the dollar and end its reign as the global reserve currency. We'll see what happens. Of course, you know if you're watching this video, XRP, Ripple, what's happening with the Ripple lawsuit, this is all so very timely to be happening at the same time. Now, with that weaponization of the dollar, that's really all these countries, Russia, China, Brazil, now we even have uh, Iran, India. They don't really, they obviously don't like the U.S. So any opportunity to take advantage of times when things are weak, they're going to essentially, this is going to do nothing more than push Russia and other countries to develop out their own crypto systems, which is just going to put us in the United States and really the Western side of things. Uh, the sphere here globally is potentially be something that would put us behind. So that's the kind of the unforeseen blowback of cutting Russia from SWIFT. The current situation in Ukraine, the dollar dominion, peak Cold War tension, along with the incentive of self-preservation, are all driving the search for alternative systems to SWIFT. It is of little doubt the Chinese would aim to trade in their central bank digital currency and Chinese Communist Party surveillance tool with Russia if they're removed from SWIFT. Russia is going to be incentivized to trade in commodities for gold, or digital renminbi. The decimation of the U.S. economy would ride the coattails of the falling dollar as global trade seeks other options for settlement. And this is this obviously article is slanted towards Bitcoin, but not necessarily Bitcoin. Certainly other utility cryptos that we all know and love and talk about. That is going to be the effect that I care most about. And uh, it's just, it's so slow. Removing Russia from SWIFT would deeply worsen the energy crisis in Europe. And this war, if nothing else, not only is it about extending Moscow and Russia's control of the overall uh, area that they're in, it's also definitely a crisis of energy and water and water. So they want to have more control and they just want to extend their front. They're really nervous of NATO being there. And at the end of the day, that 
it's about power and energy is a big part of this conflict. Now, you know, obviously Bitcoin is uh, talked about here and inflation and everything, but I, it's it's really not just Bitcoin. It's also the potential for other cryptos. And um, now here, this article, the Daily Hodl, actually talks about why it would actually send prices crashing. Economist Alex Kruger warns that if Russia turns to crypto in order to evade sanctions, crypto assets would be negatively impacted. He's basically saying this is going to, if anything, exacerbate U.S. regulators to push to crush the industry as a matter of national security. Now, that could be a good thing. If we talk about regulations, we talk about what cryptos are going to be compliant with you know with certain laws if anything is going to help those cryptos would it it would it squash a lot of these uh different types of tokens meme tokens certainly certainly a lot is going to be squashed out but this might not be a bad thing it might not be a bad thing for certain cryptos it could definitely thin things out the U.S., alongside its allies and partners, has imposed various sanctions on Russia after it invaded its neighbor Ukraine. The sanctions include disconnecting. We are, you know, obviously we already know about that. But that is, I really feel like, something to really pay attention to. Now, he does wrap the article up saying, how could things get worse? Well, China invading Taiwan, that could definitely make things worse. Russia invading more countries, I don't find that very likely. Nuclear weapons, we see Putin just uh, raised Russia's nuclear readiness up one notch as well similar to our defcon system so that could make things worse definitely mm, that would not be good so um yeah let's hope that things can work out uh, peacefully so we don't have to have some kind of crazy thermonuclear war um russia bank's been cut off some swift though let's actually talk more about other ramifications and what that would be now really russia's gonna have to they're going to have to figure out what to do and how to actually, you know, move money around. So other than crypto, we do know that there's SIPs. So there's actually, you can see here, plenty of reports that Russia has been working on a SWIFT alternative for quite some time. And I know that there were some connections between Ripple and Russia and XRP. And, you know, just to be clear, Ripple is separate from actual, from you know, the XRP ledger and XRP as a whole. Like, if you own the XRP token, technically that is decentralized. Anybody can use it. It's permissionless. You don't, it, you can't just, you can't control it. So um, that would be something that Russia would look at. But with them just, with Ripple still being an American company, I don't see them using that. If anything, we're going to have several different ones that can all obviously interoperate. Uh, but you see here, SIPS is the cross border interbank payment systems. I think this is China's international payment solution first revealed back in 2015, and there's already 23 Russian banks that are connected to SIPs. So China has not exactly been very decisive in its actions during the conflict, which is hard to decipher. But again, they're part of the BRICS alliance there, you know, Brazil, Russia, Iran, China, South Africa, and they could potentially use their own system that will be separate and apart from SWIFT. And I would almost promise that that would be based on their own type of DLT or blockchain type uh, program. So this is, again, why we need companies like XRP so that we can keep up, so that we can be competitive. Now, shout out to Crypto Airy. You see here, I wanted to play this little clip because it's, it's actually very good. And uh, Christine Lagarde, she talks about the implications of the EU Central Bank President, Christine Lagarde, answering, what if Russia uses crypto? And I wanted to play this little clip here. Let me actually bring it up. The crypto question that you had. Um you know, as you know, whenever there is a ban, a prohibition, or a, a mechanism in place to boycott or, or prohibit, there are always criminal ways that will try to circumvent the prohibition of the, or the ban, which is why it is so critically important that Mika is pushed through as quickly as possible so that we have a regulatory framework which, within which crypto assets can actually be caught in a, in a regulatory framework. And by the way, you know, it's all very well to be in cryptos, but that's not it. You have to move from cryptos to stable coins to eventually fiat currency. Now, there are ways, whether DLT or not, to actually pierce that veil and to make sure that criminal activity is actually pursued and properly dealt with. Pursued and properly dealt with. So that's her response to what's happening there and that just really tells you we know we're we're definitely marching into the world where it is going to be 
much more tightly controlled, much more tightly controlled. It, but we know that crypto is the future. If anything, we see news like this. Cash transactions are almost dead in Ukraine. In a war-torn zone right now, people are, are using USDT. Now, I know USDT can – we can – Go down a whole other topic of conversation there with that thing uh, being a scam. But you see cash transactions in Ukraine are on the decline as citizens turn to crypto. So even in a war zone, this is like a case study. This is literally a case study happening it right now in front of our eyes of, of how crypto and how something like that can survive really uh, unusual times. So fiat is dead cryptocurrencies to the rescue. Ukrainian citizens on the short end of the stick. The country's central bank ordered the suspicion of the issuance of e-money to electronic wallets. The Ukrainian central bank clarified the term e-money. It's going to apply platforms of pay like PayPal and Venmo. So they've restricted everything, but they're getting around it by using Tether and USDT, ETH, things like that, which I think is awesome. Now, moving on, let's talk more about Ripple here. If you've been paying attention to what's actually happening with the Ripple lawsuit, we'll talk about that here in a second. But India now exploring setting up rupee trade accounts with Russia to, often, to soften the sanctions blow. They're concerned vital supplies of fertilizer from Russia could be disrupted as sanctions intensify. So this is another thing to pay attention to and why, you know, just cutting out, cutting out Russia from SWIFT is going to have implications for the Western world overall because other countries, they still need to deal with Russia. So they're going to develop their, their own systems here, whether it's a, a U.S. type system or whether it's not. Now, we do know that Ripple does have ties to India. Ripple had ties through SBI Bank, which is, uh, you know, an Indian bank, if I am, am recalling correctly. And uh, they want to be able to move their money without having to necessarily settle in U.S. dollars. So with these sanctions now, Russia won't be able to settle in U.S. dollars at all. So India, they need the supplies. They need materials. They're going to figure out a way to get around it. They're going to have to figure out a way to get around it. Now, speaking of Ripple, like I said, with their fiasco that's going on i really feel like we're definitely getting closer to a resolution comment below if you're in xrp army if you're in the xrp army when do you think when do you think we'll actually have a settlement here uh, all this stuff that's going on with you know the great reset and the the different turmoil around the world crypto is front and center stage right now we're being able to see how it's surviving through the worst economic times won't necessarily worst right now but challenging times um war-torn times we're seeing it right now how something like that and how crypto is necessary just to in how really the world globally is going to a more decentralized type global rulership now and because that's really the only way that you're going to get different countries to all agree sort of like the hedera governing council model right there's still control there's still organization there just there needs to be a way where different countries are on an equal playing field, and so Ripple is one of those ways where, with everything going on, we see that we're, we're going to need some way for every country to be equal. So it's not about who can control the ledger or who controls certain assets. It's well, we can all have equal control. We can spread that out, right? So. Uh, you know, just following the actual lawsuit here, I know that they've had several recent filings that the judge has denied. And we see here recently the SEC wants to force the company to get a, to give over notes by Matthew Estabrook. That's really been what the past six months has been is the SEC saying we want these notes and Ripple saying we want these notes from the SEC. And then they're just battling and wasting their time, wasting our time back and forth with this ridiculousness. I mean, if anything... If anything, you should be writing your Congress people, if you live here in the U.S., getting involved, just letting them know what you think about things. This is ridiculous that we have to be subjected to this just blatant idiocy from the SEC. But it is what it is. I feel like we are coming to a conclusion, which, I again, I feel like could be definitely, definitely in 2022, I would say. And uh, really, what ends up happening... It's all very interesting what is happening right now. We see Ripple being moved around a lot. 390 million XRP shifted with Ripple's participation. Now, this happens a lot. XRP is moved around. But you see here, Whale Alert was tracking this. This was from up oh, recently as two days ago. A lot of different ones. You see here, 20 million XRP were sent from different wallets here. This wallet, the detailed look of the data provided by the XRP-focused BitHop Analytics 
Service says that the crypto behemoth wallet transferred 50 million XRP, which is about 34 million, 35 million dollars worth one of its wallets. They labeled it here, and they're saying that wallet is often used for transfer transferring XRP beyond Ripple to digital exchanges, crypto custody service providers, and Ripple customers. We're seeing more and more and more Ripple being bought by big Ethereum whales. We're seeing Ripple being moved around much more. That tells me we are. I feel like we're just getting closer and closer, a lot closer than where we were in the past. So really just continuing to, as we march forward to that that regulated future. XRP, I feel like in my mind, is one of those as a sure of a investment as you can make. Again, not financial advice, but we know how things are going just by paying attention. Um, now, I wanted to bring this up too here before we wrap up the video because uh, if you're watching this, you probably are in LCX as well. And there was a, a recent announcement. Uh, I talk, We've talked about the TIA token before, and if you hold LCX, you know the LCX is going to be one of those regulated exchanges that will survive in the future. And what they're doing is uh, they're, they're wanting to get into DeFi. Now, they see... They see that DeFi is the future, and so we talk about DeFi with other protocols like Alliance Block, or with other companies rather, like Alliance Block and their protocol that they're building and how they're trying to get into the DeFi space. But LCX as well ties into that very nicely because their TIA token is essentially a deflationary utility token. So you see what what I feel like is going to be uh, available in the future is just going to be different platforms different regulated platforms where they're able to take advantage of tokenization by issuing their own their own community tokens here you see it's a community first fairly launched DeFi token it's designed to become scarcer over time now if you if you held lcx back in december you actually got this airdrop to you i got some airdrop back in december i've just been holding it because what it's going to allow you to do is essentially if you're familiar with like convex or the curve wars or the curve dow it's essentially the tia token is a liquidity generation and auto yield generation protocol so sort of like owning like i said the, the curve token or convex allows you to participate in these auto yield uh, liquidity pools slash yield farms so that is what uh that's what the tia token is designed for it will be what allows lcx to, to to march into that DeFi space again the space we're going and especially listening to these high-end christine lagarde folks like that we're marching towards that system where things are definitely it's going to be a mix between that centralized control decentralized control like a bridge obviously between them that sounds really nice and lovely but really just a blend so any kind of platform any tool that is bringing that on i want to be involved in that but anyway, this video, I'm going to go ahead and just wrap it up there. Again, hopefully you guys found that information useful. Do with it what you will. Hopefully you make the right choices. And just above all, just stay safe, stay observant out there. Appreciate you watching through to the end of this video. I appreciate each and every single one of you. Uh, leave a like. Leave a comment. We'd love to hear from you below. When you think the XRP lawsuit is going to be over? And how, when do you also feel like this Ukraine conflict is going to be over? I'd love to hear from you guys as well on that because it definitely impacts our investment. And until next time, appreciate you guys. See you in the next video.